Torah TV. The world is thinking. It's actually, for the very first time, taken an image of a real planet, visually. And you won't see it there, but it actually is there. Can you see something there and something up here? There. Those are stars, but this is a planet. The reason you know it's a planet is because it's moved. Between 2004 and 2006, it had moved by just the right amount to determine how far away it was. This, by the way, they put a, a little block to cut the light out from the star. So that's the first planet that's ever been seen optically done by the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, just some other quick pictures. These are ground-based ones, and this is this lovely red hydrogen color, H-alpha. This is called the Eagle Nebula. Can you see the wings of the eagle? And he's got a, a, a fish in his talons. This is the Hubble image. Look, there's even claws on the talons. You see the detail. This picture is actually called the Pillars of Creation. Have you seen it? It's basically these are dust clouds in which stars are forming. The colors, though, would you agree, are very different. And, in fact, a lot of the colors you see now in Hubble images aren't real. It's called the Hubble palette, and I know the guy that invented it. And, basically, they take three particular wavelengths, and they, they, they build the color up in a rather clever way. So, it's not real color, but it's rather beautiful. Um, now, this is a star. Um, after Christmas, I'm going to talk about wonders of the southern sky. This is one of them. It's a star that, about 100 years or so ago, blew off a lot of its outer parts. It became invisible. These are dust clouds. As the dust clouds are expanding, we can actually begin to see the star in the middle. It's not really visible there. Now, this is the star that will probably next blow up. And can you notice there's sort of an axis here? Like that. And it's not pointing at us. Would you agree? That's good. Because I'm going to talk next year some of the biggest bangs in the universe, and we'll come back to them again very briefly shortly, and this might do that, a thing called a hypernova, and you may get a very intense beam of gamma rays coming out, and you would not want it to be pointing at the southern hemisphere, which is where it's seen from, uh, so I will go on holiday there next summer. But any time, that might go. Uh, this is a ring nebula, another one of these planetary nebula. That's the white dwarf left behind. The red is hydrogen, but look at this lovely blue and green here. Some of that's hydrogen, but quite a lot of that light comes from oxygen. Stars make oxygen. This is an explosion, a supernova remnant, seen in the year 1254. And in fact, the little remnant is so tiny, you can hardly see it on here. It's right in the middle, it's about there. But there is a remnant, which we observe, uh, which is actually powering and keeping this thing going. So the detail the Hubble gets is amazing. Now, further afield, uh, this is in fact a little galaxy nearby, the large Magellanic Cloud. This is a wonderful region of star formation. Lots of new stars. Some of them blow up. And one was seen to blow up in 1987. 220 days later, this ring lit up. It's a ring of gas that was ejected by the star some time ago. And because we know 220 light days is a distance, we know how big this is. From the angular scale taken by Hubble, we can calculate the distance of that galaxy very accurately. That's very useful. And that's a, a mosaic that's done of that same whirlpool galaxy. Isn't it beautiful? Some of these pictures are not really done for science. They're done for the Hubble heritage. It's to leave behind this wonderful range of images of our universe. And this is the Sombrero Galaxy again. I might, in the last year, give you a Hubble Heritage Lecture about some of these wonderful things and what they tell us. More recently, it's done Hubble's observations of Cepheid variables again, more accurately. And, in fact, they did have 72 plus and minus 8. They've just come up with 74.2 plus and minus 3. Still agrees with the Jodrell Bank value, happily. And that's looking at all of these little Cepheid variables around here. So we now know this really within just a few parts in 100. It tells us our universe is about just under 14,000 million years old. That's really rather good. And it's shown lovely pictures of galaxies. These lovely arcs are caused by gravitational lensing but they're just beautiful pictures. And two of the best things it ever did was to observe the most distant parts in the universe. This is the Hubble Deep Field in Ursa Major, 
and then the Hubble ultradeep field. Some of the little faint spots here are galaxies forming soon after the origin of the universe. A wonderful legacy from Hubble. <laughs>